آقای متین دفتری حقوقدان و نایب رئیس سابق کانون وکلای ایران قبل از 1975 هست ایشان از همان آغاز روی کار آمدن و شکلگیری و یا تلاش برای روی کار آوردن جمهوری اسلامی توسط بخشی از نیروهای شرکت کننده در مبارزات برای سرنگونی, جمه... سرنگونی رژیم گذشته حضور داشتم از مؤسسین جبهه دموکراتیک ملی ایران هستند که پس از قدرتگیری رژیم جمهوری اسلامی جهت حفظ سنن و دستاوردهای سکولار دموکراتیک انقلاب مشروطیت و جنبش ملی برای دموکراسی پا به میدان گذاشتند ایشان همچنین نوه بزرگ مرد جنبش ملی و دموکراتیک مردم ایران دکتر محمد مصدق هستند تشکر میکنم از شما برای پذیرش دعوت و شهادت و توضیحتون در مورد آنچه که انجام داده اید با با تشکر از دوست عزیزمون و زیاده روی ایشون در توصیف بنده امیدوارم که بتونم امروز حق مطلب رو که کاری بس بس مشکل در اینجا به جا بیارم به من تکلیف شدش هرچند که فکر میکنم که تقریبا اکثریت حوزار ایرانی هستیم در اینجا به من تکلیف شدش که به زبان انگلیسی صحبت بکنم و بنده هم قبول کردم حالا اگه اجازه بفرمایید مطلب خودم رو به زبان انگلیسی شروع میکنم The independence of a judiciary is not only limited to the attitude of those people who govern the judiciary and the attitude of the judges as well as the um, investigating judges. But it's more extensive and it covers the laws that they practice. The Islamic Republic, from the minute it took the reins of government in Iran, started a campaign, one against the laws of Iran, which were secular and which were the inheritance or heritage of the constitutional revolution and also an aggression towards another point, important point in justice, which is the independence of lawyers and bar associations. Um, I'm here to speak about uh, the Iran Tribunal and what it did and how it was convened. In this Iran tribunal, one of the subjects which was discussed was 30 years of aggression against the laws of Iran and against the right of defense which is conducted and supervised and provided by bar associations in Iran. 30, uh, 30 years of systematic aggressive attitude of 
Islamic, of the Islamic Republic towards the right of defense, was, which was a very important subject discussed at the Iran Tribunal. And I personally furnished, uh, acting there as, a, uh, as an expert witness, furnished the uh, court with a brief on the penal policy of the Islamic Republic as an instrument of flagrant abuse of human rights. In this brief, the various moods of the development of the aggression and destruction of the Iranian judicial system and, uh, and se <clears throat> secular penal policy was somehow detailed. Iran Tribunal is an apolitical, I stress, non-political movement focused on the decade of human rights abuses perpetrated against political prisoners throughout the 1980s in Iran. <clears throat> culminating in the political massacre of the summer of 1988, which was discussed here, uh, um, sp especially in the two films that we, we watched. When many thousands of political prisoners were arbitrarily executed under the power of Khomeini's fatwa for holding beliefs that contradicted with those of the regime, with the ideology, ideology of the regime, and with, with conformism that the regime required from the Iranian citizens, uh, destroying their rights. The aim of the tribunal is to hold the Islamic Republic to account for, for, uh, for these measures. The campaign is the culmination of a grassroots movement originated by the mothers, the wives, and the sisters of the victims of massacres. The tribunal comprised of three stages. A lawyer's steering committee, or steering, com uh, steering committee, and its executive committee second the truth commission held in london in june of last year and the tribunal held at the peace palace the place which houses the International Court of Justice and the Academy of International Law in The Hague between the 25th and 27th of last October 2012. The Truth Commission examined nearly a hundred witnesses And who comprised who comprised victims and also families of victims of judicial murders during that period which I mentioned. The commission examined nearly, as I said, a hundred witnesses. It documented and collected statements, witness documents, and files and, pro and, and produced a report of the extensive executions in the early 1980s, as well as the mass execution of 1988 held, uh, held in prisons all over the country, gathering data as published in its record on the following facts. One, description 
of the gross violations suffered by the victims, the arrests and their follow-up, arbitrary, including arbitrary arrests, insults, threats, tortures, conditions of detention, mock trials with no, tr with no fair trial at all, extrajudicial extra executions, prolonged detention, forced disappearances, which all amount to premeditated murder. Two, the executions and their follow-ups. The executions and their modalities, firing squads or hanging, lack of information to the families on the executions, execution of minors, no release of the bodies, payment of the bullets, payments for the bu bullets, lack of graves, lack of decent burials. Concluding on points such as state responsibility, individual responsibilities. The tribunal investigated the findings of the Truth Commission, examined, examined distinguished, ex, distinguished ex, expert witnesses and their written reports, allowing the international and Iranian prosecution team to cross-examine the experts as well as other witnesses, including former political prisoners, members of the ethnic groups and religious minorities and the moving report on the fate on the fate and um, <coughs> treatment uh, uh, the, 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 of, the, of the faith and the cruel treatment uh, cruel degrading and inhuman treatment of members of the Baha'i faith The Iran Tribunal sought to investigate, uh, as I mentioned, all these matters. Witnesses traveled from across the Iranian di diaspora, which, which spans North America and Europe, to shine the light on the humanitarian crimes committed, uh, by, on the humanitarian crimes committed by a regime that is still in power. The precursor to the tribunal was the Truth Commission, held in London in June 2012, which documented and assembled witness statements, as I mentioned before. This was the first hearing of its kind to address the crimes committed by a sitting government and brought to the fore information that has been suppressed by the Islamic Republic of Iran for more than, for more than two decades. It was an his, a historic investigation into the crimes committed against the people of Iran. The Truth Commission and the People's Court do not represent any state power and therefore could not compel the accused, meaning the Iranian regime, to stand before the court. Today, to date, there, were, there has been no investigation into these crimes and no international pressure on Iran to launch such an investigation in the absence of any formal accountability through the legal system in Iran. Survivors and relatives of the massacred people um, <coughs> have taken matters into their own hands and held this tribunal. In Iran, uh, the, the Iran tribunal, the Iran tribunal campaign is a grassroots movement, as I mentioned, that has, that has gained momentum, funding support over the last 25 years. It seeks to bring recognition for the victims who were intellectual students, leftists, 
members of the opposition parties, and ethnic and religious minorities, many whose crimes was an innocuous as uh, there was as in uh, the inno innocuous as leaflets and <coughs> distribution as leaflet distribution but resulted in being sentenced to execution by the death commission the prisoners killed were from the political and religious spectrum The tribunal came out with a very important brief interim judgment on the state responsibility and crimes against humanity. And later on, with a more extensive judgment with its, uh, its with its extensive judgment which which covered almost everything which uh, which took place at the truth commission as well as the court uh, and all the statements and the documents and uh, uh, and other evidence which were pro which were produced before the court which shall be published soon and it will be a very hefty and extensive document to read which I think and I hope it will bring some light before the international, uh, the, the international human, uh, the, the human rights organizations and, as well as uh, the body in the United Nations and the Council. But unfortunately, this verdict, this um, judgment by the, by the international, by the distinguished, a very distinguished international um, body of judges has no other effect than uh, more than being spiritual and ethical. Because there is no international instrument which can follow this up and bring the culprit culprit which is the government of Iran and all the people who have been presiding over this government directly or indirectly uh, have been responsible for the crimes and mass murders with prior uh, the, with prior programming of the murders because Iran is not and has not accepted the Statute of Rome. And had it accepted the Statute of Rome, the Statute of Rome does not allow prosecution for the past crimes of a government and its, um, its members. It only allows pro prosecution from the date a government enters the, uh, the signs and um, accepts officially the Statute of Rome. Two, there is another United Nations instrument, which is the um, Covenant for Civil and Political Rights. In the Covenant for, uh, for Civil, uh, for the, the Covenant for Civil and Political Rights also includes, um, um, in, includes a protocol which has not been accepted by the Iranian government at any age, before the revolution or after the revolution. This provides for, for the Committee on Human Rights, which is formed under the covenant, to hear complaints about abuses of human rights by member states. Iran cannot be brought to justice here by the Iranian citizens because Iran has not accepted the protocol. There is another opening, but that is to the family of nations to take step and, uh, and bring Iran to, in justice, uh, to justice, at least in the Committee for Human Rights. And that is another provision of the actual uh, covenant, which was later established in the United Nations, and that is states members of the covenant 
can bring cases against states, other states members of the covenant. Now let's go and search for states who are ready to, uh, who are members of the covenant and who are ready to take up our case. But the spiritual, the spiritual as well as the ethical effects of the tribunal, I think is a new advent which will be followed up and will not stop and will bring others to join us in our campaign for bringing the crimes against humanity to justice in a, in a near future. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.